T-Rex had lips. Every few years, there's a new controversy about dinosaurs that gets like 20 people all rocked up and makes those of us who draw dinosaurs publicly start over. Some dinosaurs look mostly the same, but others have undergone so many variations in the time since I was a kid that they don't feel like quite the same animals anymore. Let's catch up on what's new with dinosaurs, what they looked like, what they ate, how, you know, just have they been? Long time no see, dude. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, it was still a fun fact that birds and dinosaurs were related. Sounds crazy, right? I'm 27, so that's still relatively new science, right guys? Guys? On a scale of new dinosaur science, birds being dinosaurs and dinosaurs having feathers is old news now. So much has happened in the last 20 years, and it's happened to our favorites. You know how T-Rex is the biggest meat-eating dinosaur ever? Well, it still is. This will come as a shock to only dinosaur kids. When I was young, T-Rex was maybe third or fourth on the list of the biggest meat-eating dinosaurs. At the time, Spinosaurus was the big guy, alongside Giganotosaurus. Then, maybe, it was T-Rex. Now, scientists are estimating the actual weights of muscle and fat mass on these dinosaurs, and it paints a different picture to the dinosaurs we know and love. Turns out, T-Rex needed a lot of muscle to hold up that big head, and estimates make T-Rex easily the thickest meat-eating dinosaur in the dinosaur kingdom. With estimates like this, we've had to overhaul the way we draw dinosaurs pretty universally. This may come as a surprise to artists, but Dinosaurs are animals. Yeah, a lot of the pictures we are so used to seeing, even a lot of the modern representations, are just so skinny. We call this shrink wrapping. This is when a prehistoric animal is drawn with the skin wrapped tightly around its skeleton. You know, in the way that animals aren't. Take a look at this drawing I've done for you. If you were the first person to discover this skeleton, how would you draw it? How would you expect to see it drawn? If this was early paleontology, heck, if this was Jurassic Park, it would probably look something like this. What they probably wouldn't guess is the amount of fat, fur, muscles, and sheer size of the ears that this animal holds. They probably wouldn't have drawn an animal that looks like this. The first artist to draw modern animals like this was C.M. Kersiman, who came up with this idea to show how strange it is that we draw dinosaurs and other extinct animals in very non-animal ways. Now, quite a while ago, paleo artists began to realize this mistake and started understanding how fatty tissue and muscle grow on animals to support their lifestyles. This means that animals like the T-Rex look less like this and more like this with enough muscle to support their huge head and enough fat stored to not look like it's starving for its next meal. Speaking of meat eating meals though, T-Rex had lips. Dinosaurs are archosaurs, which places them in the same clade as birds, obviously, pterosaurs, some marine reptiles, and crocodilians. Either because of this connection to crocodiles or just because artists wanted dinosaurs to be scarier, predatory dinosaurs have always been drawn with exposed teeth hanging out of their mouths. Here's the thing. Animals that use teeth to eat need to look after those teeth. Teeth wear down when you expose them to the elements, so animals that have teeth have adapted two different approaches to manage this. The most common form of dental care is called polyphodont dentition, which means to continuously grow new teeth for the animal's whole life. Sharks are a famous example, but most fish and reptiles will just keep on growing them, including crocodiles. These animals don't need to protect their teeth from the elements because they're just going to replace them. The other approach to dental care is monophyodont or diphyodont dentition. 
This is to only grow one or maybe two sets of teeth in your life. This is how we humans grow teeth. We have our baby teeth, they fall out, and then we grow our adult teeth. Most mammals grow teeth like this as well, except elephants, manatees, and also kangaroos are the freaks. Most mammals will have a protective covering over their teeth to reduce this wear and tear. We call these lips. We know from jawbone fossils that carnivorous dinosaurs like T-Rex would continuously grow teeth throughout their life. But, looking at the growth patterns of the teeth versus the rest of the skeleton, shows that it could take two years for a T-Rex to replace its tooth. This means that T-Rex probably would have needed a protective covering over its teeth to help them last. These jawbones also have little dots at the base of their teeth. Crocodiles don't have these little dots, but lizards do. This is where, on a lizard, the muscle tissue attaches from the lips to the jawbone. So it looks like T-Rex had lips. This was a relatively recent controversy around dinosaurs, notably T-Rex, but this wasn't the only debate about dinosaur skin. Now look, we know birds came from dinosaurs, and we know dinosaurs had feathers. We literally have a dinosaur's tail that was trapped in amber that was covered in feathers, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about which dinosaurs had feathers. In the opening of Jurassic Park, I think 70, we see a flashback to a T-Rex living in its actual time, the late Cretaceous, and it has feathers. Did it though? We know other similar and slightly less similar dinosaurs had feathers. Cynosauropteryx, which we've met on the channel before, has feathers that we even know the color of. Families of dinosaurs with evidence of feathers include all of the dinosaur groups closely related to modern birds, like Comsognathids, Anchiornids, Dromaeosaurs, and Tyrannosaurs. T-Rex is not the only Tyrannosaur. Eutyrannus is a smaller and earlier cousin of the T-Rex from China. It is the largest dinosaur that we know had feathers with direct evidence. The discovery of feathers in Tyrannosaurus made paleontologists question whether or not T-Rex also had feathers. It doesn't. We have T-Rex skin. To be fair, we are currently missing fossilized back skin. So if there were going to be feathers on a T-Rex, it might be on its back. But there's no reason to suggest it's there at all. There's another theory that baby T-Rex could have had feathers and lost them as they grew. The thinking here is that an animal this big wouldn't need any additional insulation. Like how most mammals have fur, but elephants don't. They're so big that they don't need help maintaining their internal body temperature. Which brings in another question. We've been assuming for a long time that dinosaurs are cold-blooded, like reptiles. Birds are dinosaurs, and they're warm-blooded. This means that somewhere along the dinosaur evolution timeline from reptiles to modern birds, dinosaurs evolved to be warm-blooded. But when? Was it all dinosaurs? Or just one branch of the family tree? We know birds are warm-blooded, so it's likely that the close relatives of birds were, at the very least, kind of warm-blooded? There's a technical term for kind of warm-blooded, mesothermic. This is an animal that can produce its own body heat, but doesn't maintain a constant internal temperature. It's not super common today, but leatherback turtles are mesothermic. Studies of the growth rates in dinosaurs has shown that, in general, dinosaurs grow faster than reptiles, but slower than mammals. This could be a solid indicator that these animals were not cold-blooded or warm-blooded, but something in the middle. For dinosaurs as large as Argentinosaurus, being mesothermic would mean that they produced a lot of body heat with every step, so much that it might not have needed any kind of thermoregulation internally. So maybe the larger, slower-moving dinosaurs didn't need to be warm-blooded, the dinosaurs that were more bird-like have a much higher chance. Dinosaurs in the raptor or dromaeosaur family were built for very active lifestyles. Animals that are built for very active lifestyles 
tends to have a fast metabolism and to support that, warm blood. This could go either way for T-Rex. It's a really big animal. Many recent studies are putting estimates around 8 to 9 metric tons, that's one and a half times the size of the average African bush elephant, which is the largest land animal alive today. So maybe it didn't need to be warm-blooded? On the other hand, it is more closely related to birds than most dinosaurs were, so maybe it was warm-blooded. Or maybe the active lifestyle of predatory dinosaurs required all of them to be warm-blooded. This begins to beg the question of how active was a T-Rex? Once again, I am reminding you that T-Rex was very big. A few years ago, studies started to come out saying that it was actually too big. Too big to hunt. The theory of T-Rex being scavengers alone actually had a lot of news stories. Mostly because it's upsetting, it's provocative and it gets the people going. But learning that everyone's favorite prehistoric predator might have been a terrifying vulture didn't sit well with a lot of people. For paleontologists and anyone familiar with modern predatory animals, it both did and didn't sit well. Let me explain. Brown bears are the biggest predators in the pine forests of modern North America. They eat plants, but we're going to ignore that for this comparison because they also eat meat. They don't really look like they are built for running, but they do actively hunt deer. Alongside this, they will seasonally hang out in rivers and try to catch fish. On top of that, they also will scavenge food. If they find food left behind from wolves, mountain lions, predatory birds, other bears, seafood left on beaches, or even food caches created by rodents, they will absolutely take it. Further to this point, bears have been known to chase away other predators from their food as well. They are the biggest predators in these forests after all. This behavior is called kleptoparasitism. Bears are the only predators that have a diverse array of catching food. Most carnivores are opportunistic and will take whatever they can get, however they can get it. So what does this mean for T-Rex? They lived in a forest full of large herbivores to eat. They also lived in a forest full of smaller carnivores like Dakota Raptor to steal from. But that isn't where the controversy comes from. There's a pretty slim chance that T-Rex wasn't a scavenger. It absolutely would have got food wherever it could, but to claim that they were only a scavenger. Now that is a spicy meatball. Here's the thinking. Looking at its size and the way its legs were built has led paleontologists to believe that it actually couldn't run, but it could power walk at best. It just wouldn't be able to produce enough force to lift its entire body enough to have no feet touching the ground at the same time. Which is the definition of running, by the way. On top of this, its arms are so small that they would have served probably no function at all, where a lot of modern predators use their arms or front limbs to hold down their prey. The olfactory bulbs in the skull of a T-Rex are huge, especially compared to its brain size. This is where animals register and interpret smells. The theory here is that it had an incredible sense of smell, so it could smell things on the wind from very, very far away. One of the last pieces is that its teeth are bone crushing shaped, not meat slicing shaped. The kind of behavior you would expect from an animal that was eating another animal's leftovers. T-Rex being a scavenger was an interesting theory with reasonings behind it, and it was debated a lot. That is, until we found a T-Rex tooth embedded in the tail of an Edmontosaurus that had since healed from the bite wound. This meant that a T-Rex had attempted to take down this dinosaur while it was alive, and the Edmontosaurus had then escaped and lived to tell the tale. To us, with its bones, let's review what we know. T-Rex hunted, but it couldn't move very quickly. It had an incredible sense of smell, but it would also have to take down its prey quickly, or else struggle to hold onto it with those tiny little arms. On top of that, it had Teeth designed to crush bones. You know what that sounds like to me? An ambush predator designed to smell very large animals before their prey can see it, hear, or smell them. Get as close as it possibly can, probably with padded feet to reduce noise like modern predators. 
they'd lunge at short range and quickly use an incredible bite force and bone crushing teeth to take down 16 ton animals like Edmontosaurus. So, T-Rex, the massive, muscly, fatty, slow-moving ambush predator that probably wouldn't chase prey very far, was more closely related to birds than reptiles, but didn't have feathers, instead having some form of thermal regulation in its body. A little different to the reptilian movie monster that we are used to. I'm Ben the Quasi-Ecologist, this is The Natural World Explored, and until next time, Stay curious, friends. Wait, and it had lips. It also had lips. Yeah, people are gonna watch this and think that I don't like Jurassic Park. I love, I love Jurassic Park.